Hello and welcome to this video on using term-to-term -term formulae to generate a sequence. Now I've got an example here. I'm saying that Tn is the nth term of a sequence. So what I mean is that if I had, say, T1, that would represent the first term. If I had T2, that would represent the second term of the sequence, etc. So, we've got these rules which govern how these terms in the sequence are generated. So, this is T1, we know that means the first term. So, the first term of the sequence is 4. And then we've got this more confusing thing here which says Tn plus 1 is Tn plus 3. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's easiest to see if we let n be a particular number. So, if we said let n be equal to 1, what happens when we substitute that into this rule here? Well, we'll have t, well, what is, if n is 1, what is n plus 1? It would be 1 plus 1, which is 2. So we'd have t2 is equal to tn, well, n was 1, so it's t1 plus 3. Now, if we put that into words, what does that mean? That says the second term of the sequence is equal to the first term plus 3. So it says we've got the first term, if we add 3 to it, it gives us the second term. What about if we let n be equal to 2? Well, we have t of 2 plus 1, which is t3, is equal to tn, so it'll be t2 plus 3. So we can see that means in words the third term of the sequence is equal to the second term of the sequence plus 3. So you can see in general what this rule is saying is that we can generate the next term of the sequence by doing the previous term plus 3. So the third term is the second term plus 3, the fourth term would be the third term plus 3, etc. So it's basically saying the next term of the sequence is the previous term of the sequence plus 3. So in this particular case, if the first term is 4, then the second term is the first term plus 3. So t2 is 4, because t1 was 4, plus 3, which would be 7. And then we said the third term was the second term plus 3. So it's the second term, 7 plus 3, etc. And you can see it's adding 3 each time. And now we know another way of getting the formula for this. We know how to find an nth term formulae. So we'd know that, well, if we're adding 3 each time, then we could write the nth term, or we could refer to it as Tn, the nth term is equal to 3n, and then 3n would give us the 3 times table, where the first term of the sequence would be 3 times 1, which is 3, but we actually want 4, so it would be plus 1. This here, this expression here, is known as a position to term formula. And that's because we're using the position n in the sequence to work out the term. Whereas this is known as a term-to-term -term formula, and that's because each term is defined in terms of the previous term in the sequence. So we're going from term to term in the formula. Let's just do one more simple one before we go on to some more complicated examples. So if we said that t1 was equal to 5, and we said that tn plus 1 is equal to 2tn. Now that means the next term of the sequence is equal to 2 times the previous term of the sequence. So if the first term is 5, the first term is 5, that means t2 would be 2 times t1. So it would be 2 times 5, which is 10. Then the third term would be 2 times the second term. So it would be 2 times that, which is 20, and then be 40, etc. Now let's just do these uh, examples here, and I saw an example just like this in one of the specimen papers for the new GCSE. So, we've got the population of Flobland after n years is Pn, where P0 is 3000 and Pn plus 1 is 1.2 Pn. What is the population after 4 years? Well, if the population of Flobland after n years is Pn, and we want it after 4 years, we want P4. So let's do this idea of kind of using different values of n. So if we let n be equal to 1, then we'd have p of 1 plus 1, so p2, would be equal to 1.2 times pn, which would be p1. But actually, we don't know what p1 is yet. We know what p0 is. It's actually starting from the zeroth term. So if we let n be equal to 0, then we can say that p of 0 plus 1, so p1, is equal to 1.2 times p2. 
n is 0, p 0, but we know what p 0 is, it's 3000, so it'd be 1.2 times by 3000, and if we do that on my calculator, we get 3600. So we know after one year the population is 3600, then we can get the population after two years, it's going to be 1.2 times the population after one year, which we worked out was 3,600. And if we do that on my calculator again, we get 1.2 times 3,600. We get 4320. And then we can get uh, P3. P3 is going to be 1.2 times P2, the previous term of the sequence. And if I just do that directly on my calculator, it's 1.2 times P2, which we worked out was 4320. So we get 5184. And then finally, P4 is going to be 1.2 times P3. So we do that times by 1.2 again. And then we get uh, 6220.8. But we can't have a fractional population, so it's going to give us a population of 6221 to the nearest whole, isn't it? So in words, this basically means population the next year is 1.2 times the population in the previous year. Just like this formula here meant the next term of the sequence is 2 times the previous term in the sequence. Now let's do this second question here. We've got the nth term of the sequence is Tn, where T1 is 3, and then Tn plus 1 is equal to 2Tn plus 1. What is the third term of the sequence? Well, the first term is 3. And then the next term, T2, would be 2 times T1 plus 1. So the next term of the sequence is 2 times the previous term plus 1. So 2 times the previous term, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So the next term would be 7. And then to get the third term, it would be 2 times the second term plus 1. So 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15. And then, well, we have got the third term, that's the answer, but we could go further if we wanted. 2 times 15 is 30, plus 1 is 31, etc. And finally, this one's an interesting one. We've got T1 is equal to 0. The first term of the sequence is 0. Uh, T2 is 1. The second term of the sequence is 1. And um, we've got this more complicated formula now. And these formulas, by the way, are sometimes known as recurrences because it's based on previous terms in the sequence. Now, to illustrate what's going on here, let's just try a particular value of n. So let n be equal to 1. Then it would be t of 1 plus 2, which is t3, is equal to t1 plus 1 is t2, plus tn, which is t1. And can you see that the third term would be the second term plus the first term. And similarly, if we let n equal to 2, we'd similarly get t4 is equal to t3 plus t2. So if we look at this pattern here, we can see that each term is the sum of the previous two terms. The fourth term is the third term plus the second term, that's the sum of the previous two terms. So if we start with 0 as our first term and 1 as our second term, 0, 1, it's saying that each term is the sum of the previous two. So 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, and what do we want? The seventh term. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we've got it. The seventh term is going to be 8. And therefore, this here is the term-to-term -term formula for something called the Fibonacci sequence. You might recognise the sequence. It's called the Fibonacci sequence, and it can be represented using this formula here. You might wonder if there is a position-to-term formula for the Fibonacci sequence, and the answer is yes. The nth term can be given using this very complicated formula here. So we have 1 over root 5, and then we have uh, 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the power of n minus 1 minus root 5 over 2 to the power of n. And that does actually work. If you make n equal to 1, then you do get that first term of the sequence. If you make n equal to 2 and sub that in, you do get that. If you make n equal to 3, you do get that. So it does actually work. But I don't know about you, but I think that this is much simpler than this formula here.